Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel, and if you like, if you like it, you can subscribe, like, click the thumbs up button, and subscribe. You can either click the bell once, or you can click it tw twice if you want all of the videos. Um, yeah, I, sometimes I talk about immigration, not very often, because it's not all the time that immigration issues pop up, well, new laws and stuff. But, you know, I was listening to a lot of those people who have been affected by Trump's tweets. And I was thinking about how they're running around, they're going to they're going to solicitors, they're going all over the place, they're absolutely panicked. And I was thinking to myself that these people, they must be so anxious, so worried, so depressed about their situation, and they must feel pretty helpless as though there's not much they can do. And I was trying to think to myself, you know, if I wanted to advise people in that situation, what could I do or what could I say? The thing is, is that when you're in a situation like that, it can be absolutely, it will seem insurmountable. It will make you feel as though there is nothing that can be done. But you know, when, um, when you see something like that, when you hear about the ice raids, if you're, if you're in a country illegally and you don't know what to do or whether you are legal, well, I shouldn't say are legal, but you're waiting for documentation, but they haven't processed it yet. And you're worried that they're going to knock on the door. All of these things are out of your control. So the first thing you have to do is look at your situation and see what you can control. There will be certain situations in your life that you can control. And these are what will help you, will help stabilize you just a little bit. There might not be a lot you can do, but there will be a little, and a little will be enough. Sometimes it's the expectation, you know, we expect things to go well. You know, if we put in an application for a visa and we pay the money, we expect to get the visa. We expect that process to go along smoothly. It would not occur to any of us that if you pay your money, you fill up the form correctly, that you're not going to get the visa. And it's these kind of things that cause anxiety because it leaves you worrying, what did I do wrong? Have I done something wrong? And all of those things. And then you hear about all of these. When you hear about Trump's tweets about, you know, millions are going to be deported and people whose papers have not yet been processed, they'll, you know, ICE will be knocking on their doors. It must make you worry, whether you have cause to worry or not. And, you know, sometimes you have to wonder whether it's a lot of hype or whether it's actually going to happen. You don't know. And that's also a, a cause for concern because it's also something else you don't have control over. So I wrote down a few little notes, hopefully to help ease some of the anxiety. It can't ease all of it because I can imagine how you, how vulnerable each one who is in this situation must feel. So, OK, um, first thing you have to do when, well, not have to do, the first thing best to do when you're in a situation like this is to expect there to be problems. You know, a lot of times we get anxious is because we expect things to go smoothly. We don't expect there to be problems. If you anticipate problems and you anticipate how you're going to deal with it, that's half of the battle. If you don't anticipate problems, you're, you're not going to make any plans on how to do with it. And the thing is, is that supposing when you put that application in, you said to yourself, oh, I'm going to put it in. But just supposing it doesn't come through in six months, like they say, just supposing it comes in a year or two years, what am I, what would I do in that kind of situation? Anticipate problems. It will help you have a contingency plan in place and it will help ease the anxiety because you've already prepared for that problem. So that's the first thing. Um, if you can't work, 
you know, you can't work because they have your paperwork. So that's going to make you feel helpless, no money, no support. You've exhausted all your help from your relatives. What can you do in that situation? Well, to be honest, you can use that time to look, think about the worst case scenario. I always do that. Anytime I'm anxious or have a challenge, I think of the worst case scenario and I work myself backwards. In your situation, what's the worst thing that could happen? They could deport you back to a country where you don't know anyone, where you have no friends, leaving your family behind, that kind of stuff. That is the worst case scenario. So what do you do? Worst case scenario, if you get deported there, you'll have to kind of think in advance, what would I need to do? What would I need to prepare for? Would I need to find schools for my children? Would I need to find a job? You start researching um, the jobs in the jobs in where I don't know which part they would deport you to, but you start researching jobs, you start researching schools, you start finding out, you know, how difficult it is to get help or how easy it is to get help. You try to find out if there's anybody else in your situation you can talk to. And the fact that you're actually doing something proactively will give you a sense of control. And if the worst case scenario happens, you've already prepared for the worst case scenario. If it doesn't happen, you can work yourself down, um, backwards. Start reorganizing paperwork. Start getting your house in order. Start doing things that you wouldn't have ordinarily done just to get things, systems in place. Start talking to family and friends. Spending time with those special loved ones who, you've, who you haven't spent time with for a while because you've been worrying. Use the time constructively. Um, how do you break down the problem that is so overwhelming? You know... The system is designed to break you down, this immigration system. That's why they call it the hostile environment. It's meant to break you down. The fact that you're, you're legally in the country and you're just waiting paperwork, some of those of you who are not legally in the country, which regardless of the situation, taking away your benefits, you can't go use the NHS, can't rent rooms, you know, it's breaking people down. And so you have to kind of break down the problem and deal with one problem at a time and see how you can overcome that problem. If it's about you can't rent a property, what can you do? What is within your scope to do? How supportive are your friends? You know, a lot of times when we're in the situation, a lot has got to do with how pe other people relate to us. Sometimes it's got to do with our own pride. We feel embarrassed and we feel guilty and we don't know what people are going to say. I think people's opinions can cause the most anxiety in some cases. So you have to kind of distract yourself from people's opinions. You know, you'll get people, you will get toxic people. Stay away from them. You'll get toxic people who say, oh, look how, look how she did show off. Look what she did have before. And no, look what happened to her. She have, to, she have to go back with her head between her knees and all that kind of stuff. You'll get people saying nasty things, vengeful things. Try not to let that determine how you feel and what plans you make because you've got nothing to prove to anyone. When you have, whatever decision is made for you or you make, you have to decide how you're going to handle that. If the decision is made for you, you might not have much choice. If you make the decision, whatever that decision it is, you have an element of choice. And the, the um, goal is to have as much choices and options as possible. So when you're planning for the worst case scenario, Give yourself plenty of options and what if scenarios. What if I did it this way? What if that happens? How would I handle, handle it if this happened? Those kind of situations. Um, yes, yeah, so start, start establishing contacts in the country that you're from or the country that you originate from or the country you believe they may send you back to. Start establishing contacts. You know, it's not hard to do now when you've got Facebook and all that stuff. 
I mean, you don't want to attract the wrong people. You you won't be saying, oh, look, I might be deported or I might be coming back to this country. You can make out like you're a tourist or you can t speak to the tourist companies. You can make out like you want to go on holiday or something. They don't have to know that you're worried about being deported. So you can have that kind of thing and get to know different people. You can also get, to, that's also a good way to kind of make friends. People think you're coming for a visit or, you know, they're more likely to help you than if they think, oh, you've been deported and you're looking to, for somewhere to, you know, hang out or some, some place to live. They won't want that burden. But if they think you're just visiting or they think you might be coming to invest in the country, whether you're coming to invest in the country or not, it doesn't matter. But you could be you could actually be saying that, look, you know, I'm thinking about coming to Gambia. I think about coming to Nigeria, Africa, Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, whatever it is. I'm thinking about buying a property and then I was just wondering what's the best area to buy a property and what is it like in that area? What are the people like? Is there, What are the crime levels? Those kind of questions. So you don't have to go with a defeatist. You don't have to go with that sense of embarrassment because you would have done your homework beforehand. You would have found out about the area and about what's going on. And people who don't think you're a burden, are more likely to help you than those people who think, oh my God, you know, she's being kicked out of the States or she's being kicked out of the UK and she's coming over here. Oh, I don't want anything to do with it. So they don't have to know your business. They don't have to know your business. So all you do, you're just trying to find out a bit more of the country. You can find it on Facebook. They're all people are always talking about um, where they live, what countries. And I mean, if you see somebody put something up, you know, you could, and it's in the country that you might go back to. You can, you know, click on them and say, oh, that's very nice. Where is that? And, you know, you can find out about people. You know what I mean? Of course, you have to use just common sense. You don't just talk to any and anybody. But, you know, you should be able to have a sense of discernment and be mature and responsible enough to know who to talk to. Um, what else? Yeah, I've already said about what you have, what you can have control over. Certain things you have control over, certain things you don't. You know what is irritating me? I, I was watching this um, video where this woman was talking about people, immigrants who are going to be deported and how they're stressed all over the paperwork. And she's saying, oh, they must have happy thoughts and every day they must say happy things and be positive. I mean, and do exercises. I'm thinking, you know, you're, you're in a situation where you don't know whether you're coming or going. You don't know if immigration are going to knock on your door any minute. You don't know if you're going to be separated from your family. And you're going to be saying, oh, I want to go and have an exercise or I want to go and have happy thoughts. I mean, maybe in the grand scheme of things, it might help. It might help open your mind. It might help, you know, for those few minutes that you're having happy thoughts. It might make you appreciate your current situation. But when people are in that situation, they cannot really see those happy thoughts. They're, they're usually so depressed that they don't want to go out and exercise. So everything has to be in perspective. You have to kind of think, OK, if I wake up every morning and I think about, you know, those people down the road who you, you stepped over the other day because they didn't have anywhere to live. What would you do if you were in that situation? You can make comparisons with people who are worse off than you to make you feel better. That could work. That could work. Some people say, oh, you have to be grateful that you, you woke up in the morning. Sometimes when you are in that place, those kind of thoughts don't come into your mind. If they're helpful and you're that way inclined, then yes, put, draw onto those positive memories and thoughts and you know it, it is difficult it is difficult but you know and with regard to exercise sometimes you might not you might feel so overwhelmed and you might okay whether you go to the gym or whether you just go for a long walk sometimes it clears your head and sometimes it might give you um time to think about 
alternatives and other options that you might not have thought about if you was in the house worrying about things you're surrounded by people who might be pulling at you asking you questions and you don't have time to think so sometimes exercise is good just to free your mind I know that sometimes I can get a bit you know I overthink on things and if I walk to work you know which is about a 30 minute walk you know, I feel kind of, you know, I have thoughts in my head that I would not have thought about if I'd driven to work or if I'd spoken to somebody on the phone during that walk and I would not have benefited as much. So sometimes though little things like that, they might seem a bit ridiculous when you're feeling as though you don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next, but they might help you have a different way of looking at things. And it might you might have an opportunity to think about something you never thought about before because your mind is clear or just because you're not thinking about anything. You're just doing your exercise. Um, the mind is a dangerous thing. Um, if you think bad thoughts, they say if you think bad thoughts, bad things will happen. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And conversely, if you think that the best is going to happen, the best will happen. Not maybe the way you thought it would happen, but what is best for you will happen. You can always say, I trust that the process will bring out the best in me. Because a lot of times when we face these challenges, sorry, these challenges, they are to make us stronger. They are to give us courage. They are to build up our character. So even though the outcome is not what we would have wanted, you, you usually find in the long time you're much better off. So sometimes you just have to trust the process and know that whatever is going on, providing you believe it is for your own good and your own betterment, it will be. But if you think, oh my God, you know, I'm going to end up homeless, I'm going to end up without food, I'm going to end up no friends, everybody's going to be laughing at me, I'm going to be a disgrace, I'm going to feel so embarrassed, nobody will want to know me, I'm going to be rejected, I'm going to be isolated, Those you'll bring that on yourself. So you need to think positive in that regard. Just believe in the process that it will make you stronger, it will be challenging, but it will make you stronger and the outcome will be what was ordained for you. Because we all have our lives cut out for us. None of us know what's meant to happen from one day to the next. We think we predict our lives, we don't. They're already preordained. So you just have to go with the flow and just hope that it will work out in a way that is beneficial for you. Um, and I think that's all I've got to say for now. I hope it helped relieve some of the anxiety of those who are going through it. My, I, I do sympathise with you and I empathise with you as well. And yes, I hope things turn out okay. Bye bye.